Telescope Live is a worldwide remote telescope service which allows people all over the world, anywhere in the world, access to the most amazing telescopes and high-tech equipment in Chile, Australia and Spain. I've been so busy with schoolwork lately, so it was absolutely perfect timing when Alex sent me a message from Telescope Live over on Instagram asking me if I'd like to take a shot on one of the scopes. Now I'm going to be using the Chile One Telescope over in the El Sos Observatory in the heart of Bortal One Skies in Chile. This is an absolutely awesome experience that I want you guys the chance to have as well. So let's hop into the browser. I'm going to show you how I'm going to set up my imaging requests. I'm going to do two imaging requests um, in this case with 150 credits. Let's get going. So when you want to create a new request, all you have to do is come over to here to new request and type in your target name. In my case, it's the Eagle Nebula. And then you just have to click search coordinates. It's got a whole database already there for you. So no need to search them up on the internet. Then we're gonna click continue. Then you'll see we have the vast list of telescopes available. So there's some in Australia, two in Spain and four in Chile. In my case, I'm gonna be using the Chile One telescope. So we can see the specs of the telescope here and it has a 60 centimeter diameter, which is absolutely amazing. Um, the credits we're going to use per minute is two and a half, so it's not one credit per minute, it's two and a half credits per minute. Watch out for that because you can easily get confused with that one. So in my case, Chile one is two and a half credits per minute. We're going to click continue. And then after this, you're going to select your observation mode. So I'm just going to click astrophotography. Now, when you see astrophotography, you'll see something that's probably quite familiar to you. A list of filters, especially if you use mono cameras already. So on the Eagle Nebula, I'm just going to be doing R, G and B so that I have enough credits for a second target. So I'm going to be doing R, G and B on the Eagle Nebula. And with this field of view, I'm going to get really nice close up on the pillars, which is something I've always wanted for where, from where I am. But because of the foliage around my garden, I can't see it at all. So then it's going to ask you to select the exposure time. I'm going to do same exposure time for all filters and I'm going to be doing 120 seconds for each filter. Then it's going to ask you to select the exposure count for each of the filters. So how much red, how much green and how much blue. I'm going to do five of each filter and you can see up here it's updated this. So it's going to say total of 75 credits. Now that's just enough for me to be able to do two targets because I have 151. So now we've got everything set up, I am going to click submit on this one and that is going to go through to the telescope in Chile and that is going to automate and do its thing and I'm hopefully going to get the images back within a week. So on to future me. <laughs> and this is actually just two days later, telescope live for a really quick turnaround for the images to get back to me and for me to stack and edit them. So I stack them separately in their channels, so all the red, all the green, all the blue, combine them on a bi-channel basis in Photoshop. Let's jump into Photoshop, I'll show you the separate channels of the Triffid Nebula, and I'll leave the Eagle Nebula until the end, so make sure to stick around for that one. So these are the separate channels in Photoshop. So I have my red channel, my green channel, my blue channel, and I also have my luminance channel, and I combine them to get this. Now this is six minutes of data. I mean, it's six, six minutes. So one thing I was really keen on showing you is a little technique that I use to get rid of the halos and the discoloration in the stars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to filter. We're gonna go into camera raw filter and we're gonna go into this little defringe tab. And if you zoom into the part of sky that you see a little bit of discoloration in the stars. There's not a lot now because I've taken most of it out. But if you zoom into that part of the sky, choose the colour that your stars are, pull the defringe up slider just slightly and you'll start to see them going a nice natural white colour. And we do this to take away halos in the image. So I'll put up a picture of what the stars would have looked like if I hadn't have used this technique. It's a really lovely technique to use. After I've used that, I feel like it sharpens up the image a little bit, a little bit too much and brings out the noise. So again, I'm going to go into filter camera raw and I'm just going to come up here 
to just noise reduction and just smooth out the background ever so slightly, not losing any detail in the deep space object. As for the Eagle Nebula, you will almost be able to see it around the rim of my desktop screensaver, but this, just out of interest for you, is what one single two minute sub in red looked like. I'm not going to show you the green and the blue because there's hardly anything in them because this is predominantly a red nebula, as you can see from my screensaver. <laughs> So these are the famous pillars of creation and I'm really happy with how these turned out, but you're gonna have to stick around to the end to see that photograph. Huge shout out to Telescope Live for this awesome opportunity. I'll make sure to leave a link to their website down in the description below. Make sure to go and check them out. I want you guys to have experienced what I have just experienced. Make sure to check out my Instagram, Helena's underscore Astro, for these to be posted in the not too distant future, maybe with a few tweaks here and there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, happy stargazing, stay safe and clear skies.